This is the 2025 Nissan Altima. Is it better than ever? Hey everybody, it's Tom from Vehicle Visionary. I hope you're having a great day. Today we're at Orr Nissan to go over the minor changes you're gonna find here for 2025 and tell you what has changed and show you what else is here in case this is something you want to buy as a 2025 model. If you want to know more, maybe come in and buy this model or anything else they have here at the dealership, check out the link down in the description of the video. And we'll go over the particulars regardless of whether it's changed or not. So we're gonna have our LED projector beam headlights. Projector beam, well, maybe a little bit old school. I don't know, what do you think about that? It does get the job done being LED. You can still see, well, that works. LED daytime running lights combined with the turn signal indicator. And with the way the grill looks on here, it fits the profile of the Altima in my personal opinion. Kind of a unique look. It's not a split look. You don't have an upper and a lower grill the same way with a bumper in between or anything like that. I think that works well for Nissan. There's your Nissan badge right there. Got have some gloss black here as well. Now we won't find any active air curtains or anything like that, but I don't think that's a big deal. And we have an option here as we show you the tire and wheel setup. I'm going to tell you what those numbers are, but you have either front wheel drive or all wheel drive, depending on what you want. So what is your tire and wheel setup? We're looking at 235 on the width, a 40 series sidewall wrapped around the 19 inch wheels. And we'll work our way up here to the side view mirrors. They're going to be manually folding just like that, power adjustable. One thing you won't find here is the fact that they have blind spot monitoring built into the side view mirrors. It's actually right here. We're going to show you that later in the video when we turn the ignition on, but I want you to know that it is there. We're going to have a conventional size sunroof up here. How many of you are hoping for a panoramic sunroof? Well, not sure if we're going to see that or not. Chrome door handles right here on the front and the rear doors give it a little bit of a nice look to that some people like chrome some people don't just depends on who you are overall the body lines i think they work i think it works well i do like the tail light design here you're going to have your ultima logo and that nissan logo there and if you're curious you probably saw it in the title of the video but this is the sl trim level so if that's something you're looking for you're on the right video one thing that has changed that maybe i should have talked about earlier in the video being a major change is what's under the hood no more six cylinder available as of 2025 so you're gonna have the 2.5 liter direct injection four cylinder it is a naturally aspirated motor it makes 188 horsepower and 188 pounds feet of torque so for those of you who are saying well Okay, it's a smaller motor, less power. Does it get better gas mileage? Just walk back here to the window sticker and we'll take a quick look at that and we'll see what that says. We're gonna have 27 city, 37 highway, 31 combined, and 3.2 gallons of gas for every 100 miles driven. Now, to open the gas door, you're gonna have to go here into the interior. There is a release right there to do that. Let me make sure I get the right release. There it is. And you're not going to have capless fuel fill. You're going to have an old school gas cap. That seems to be old school. Maybe it's not. I don't know. But you just don't see that as often as you used to. 16.2 gallons is the total size of the gas tank. And here is your remote. If you want to see what's on there, you've got all the typical features and functionality. Lock, unlock. You can pop the trunk open. You also have remote start. So that's always good to know. I'm going to hold that button down. Now, you will have to give it a little bit of help to gain access to the 15.4 cubic feet worth of cargo capacity. Something that is also good news that hasn't changed for 2025 is the fact that you still have a spare tire located underneath the floor. And I'm gonna reach over here and release the seats. This is these controls or releases, I guess you could call right there. That's how you lower the seat back. So there's not something in the interior to do that. It's actually in that trunk area. And there you go, everything is maximized. If you need to stick something in the trunk area that doesn't fit in this area, you do have a lot of extra space here when you lower the seats down. And let's talk about rear seat space for your back seat passengers. Now I'm five foot 10, I'm sitting straight up. 
So yeah, somebody over six feet tall, you need to be in the front seat. But you know what? I guess you could slouch down a little bit and be okay. I don't know. It depends on how you're comfortable. There is a little bit of recline built into the seat backs, but you can't adjust that. But that is a common question I receive. We'll also have the fold down armrest with the cup holders built in. So that's going to be there. And as far as our door panels go, let's go over that real quick. We're going to have a pretty good bit of size right there. So that works. A bottle holder down there slash door bin. You could use it for either one. But something that I think will be a popular feature, two popular features among people, is going to be right here on the rear of the center console. And that's going to be number one, the presence of rear air conditioning vents. And underneath that, you can see right down here that we have the USB options. And while we're here, I'll go ahead and show you that sunroof we talked about earlier, conventional size, but you do have the ability to open this area. If you want to, it will tilt and slide open. All right, it's time to answer that question that I know a lot of you have. What is the sticker price? $36,195. Let's see what else you get for the price beyond what I've already shown you. Over here on the passenger side, we're gonna have plenty of space within the glove box. If you wanted to actually put gloves in there, there's a lot of room for that. Door bins over there on the passenger side, nice and large, or door bin. I said bins, but there's one, so I better say that for the correction. Nazis have a fit and said, you said door bins? But it is a door bin and it's large. So is the armrest. Plenty of room there, a little bit more of space than what we had in the rear. So I'm gonna grab the camera here from Austin real quick and show you what's going on here on the driver's side. We're gonna have all of our typical controls here for our power windows. You can lock and unlock the windows, control your side view mirrors right there. And by the way, let's do this real fast just so that I can show you because I promised I would. And since I don't want to forget, there is your blind spot monitoring. You can see that orange light that just came on right there. So that's what you have. Steering wheel mounted controls here, all that good stuff and your instrument cluster. Pretty basic, but you know what? It gets the job done. You have a combination of some analog gauges and the digital speedometer there, so you can see what's going on where all of that is concerned. Pretty easy to deal with. And we do have a tilt and telescopically adjustable steering wheel. You adjust with that lever right there. You can see that it does adjust tilt and telescopically. Position it where you want it, and make sure you put that lever back in place. That could be interesting if you forget. We can open the trunk right there. You can see a couple of the other features there as well if you want to use that. So that's going to work there. Steering assist is what we have as far as this button right here. And over here on the left-hand side of the steering wheel, a multitasker that I know a lot of you didn't realize was a multitasker, but you can control your headlights right here. You can just set those to auto if you want to, and you're good to go. Too bad you can't set the turn signal indicators to auto for all of you that don't know about this lever, or maybe you just couldn't afford that option when you bought your vehicles. Over here, you control the windshield wipers. Yes, I'm just going to segue right into that as if I didn't say anything sarcastic whatsoever. I do have a lot of turn signal sarcasm, but here's something else that is new. The 12.3 inch touchscreen. Built-in navigation. You can see what all is here. It's not complicated to use. It might look that way, but it's not pretty simple. Everything you want, you're going to have your wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto here. All those great features. You can pair your phone wirelessly. That's always good. Pretty simple. And when I go into reverse, you get to see the camera views. A couple of different views that you can see right there. So you'll have your trajectory lines, that nice overhead view. I like that letting you know to check your surroundings because you never know what's going on around you. And right down here, we have some other controls, volume and the power for the radio. Let's turn that off so we don't get a copyright strike from YouTube. And you can surf your stations right here. You can see what all is going on. Pretty easy to figure out. Dual zone climate control is also going to be here. And then you're gonna have your heated seats right here. You also have a heated steering wheel. There is your heated steering wheel button. Not ventilated seats, but at this point of the year, I really am not too worried about that. You can see what else is there. Pretty easy to figure out. I like that. There's where you're going to control the temperature. You can set it to auto, whatever you'd like to do. You can also sync both sides together. Down here, we have a wireless charging pad. I can pull my phone out just so you can see that in action. But that is your wireless charging pad. You'll know it's on not only when the phone itself comes on, as it did right there, but you also have your indicator right here. A couple of USB ports and a 12 volt power outlet. So nice to have that. And I know for me, I'm used to reaching up here 
to push a button to start the engine in the vehicles I drive, but it's down here. You'll get used to that if this is a new vehicle to you, something you hadn't had before. Just one of those things that here, conventional style shifter as far as everything goes here. And if you're wondering about the L right here, that keeps it in low, but you still have 100% 100, 100 of the horsepower and torque from the engine, but you don't have to worry about that situation where in low traction situations, it's working its way back and forth. Power parking brake and brake hold mode will be right here. And as far as the center console goes, we're gonna have quite a bit of space on the lid that doubles as an armrest. What about the space within? Well, not too bad, I'd say, for a smaller sedan like this. And speaking of consoles, we also have the upper console up here. And something I'm glad to see here, we just reviewed a $92,000 GMC Yukon, and it did not have this, a sunglass holder. So that's interesting. Here's the control for your power sunroof. You can see it says open right there. It also says close. So it's a good thing that you don't just open it and then it stays open. That's your upper console. Not a lot going on there to talk about. We also have our, the visors are here. You can see, I, this is interesting that it says sliding visor right there, which means that when you do this, if the sun's way back here, well, you can slide it back. And you know what? That pretty much covers up the entirety of the window. We have power seats for the driver and the passenger. And with the power driver's seat, you can move the seat up or down. I don't know why more automakers don't make the power adjustable passenger seat that way too. That's the thing you can't do there as far as that goes. All right, here we go on the test drive. Let's see what happens with 188 horsepower under the hood. I don't think people who are buying an Altima are really too worried about a lot of get up and go, but you know what? It's not too bad. I'm just easing into the pedal just a little bit and already up to 54 miles an hour, barely at quarter throttle, so not too bad. I don't think anyone's going to expect the Altima to try and pull the front end off the ground when you take off from a red light, but I think you'll be fine. It'll be interesting to see what people think about that change with the 2.5 liter, no longer the four cylinder or six cylinder available. But for me, I think it does just fine. I know we all want more power, we want the bigger motors, but it just seems to be the direction that most automakers are going to go to these smaller motors, four cylinders for some reason. And there's still a few out there that are not doing it, but that's what you get here. The handling characteristics are good. The ride quality is acceptable. I'd say it's good. It's not exactly a Cadillac, but it's also not a tank, and it's closer to the Cadillac than it is to the tank. If you've never ridden a tank, tanks are no, known for being a comfortable ride quality. At least that's what I understand. Someone might be able to tell us down in the comments section because I've never been in a tank before. Maybe I should review a tank and then I can tell you. But a great turning radius, that's for sure. You will have no trouble getting around in tight situations. Nice tight turning radius. Handling is good. So if you live in a big city and you need a car like this, a car of this size, this definitely will fill the bill where that is concerned, being able to zip around and get in and out of those tight parking spots when there's a lot of congestion or dealing with close quarters on the road, whatever the case is, being safe, of course, as you do it. Gas pedal and brake pedal, easy to manage, and the seats seem to be pretty comfortable. I do have lumbar support here on the driver's side. There is not lumbar support on the passenger side. It's one thing that I'd like to see more automakers start doing. Why not put lumbar support on both seats? If the driver's seat has it, the passenger seat should have it too. But overall, an enjoyable vehicle to drive. I know the price point is somewhat high for what it is in my personal opinion, but compared to a lot of other vehicles out there, uh, not terrible in this day and age. And there it is, the 2025 Nissan Altima. What do you think about the changes that have come for 2025? I have to say, I think the most popular change will be the infotainment screen, that larger screen. What do you think about what's under the hood now? Tell me what your thoughts are. I do want to say a special thanks to our friends at Or Nissan for loaning us this Altima for the day so we could tell you all about it. And a special thanks to all of you for being kind enough to take the time to watch and give us the opportunity to give you a vision for your next vehicle. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to hit the like button. Make sure to share this video on your timelines on social media. That helps us out a lot. We appreciate it. And make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any future videos. If you'd like to learn about additional vehicles you may wish to consider purchasing, check out the videos that are on the screen right now, and we'll see you there.